I'm Justin Roiland, uh, founder and CEO of Squanch Games, and I'm here talking about High on Life. And so I went through the demo real quick, and I played Accounting Plus, and I know you worked on Trover as well. Is with High on Life, does this one feel more like what you've been? Each one feels a bit more, more ambitious. Yeah. More of your personality is. How intentional is that with each one of these releases? Um, I, I guess intentional. I get it's also just a byproduct of having more budget, you know, and maybe being just more ambitious each time, you know. With accounting, it was very like that was a game jam thing. Like me, Dom, and William, just like in the Rick and Morty offices, we just stayed up super late and came up with the thing, and I, I was just scripting. And then we, and they were like building the environments and like modeling the, you know, like m literally building stuff. And we would go in and be like, holy shit, you know. And VR was so new and exciting, you know, room scale. And then, and then, and then I'd run them into the other room into the edit bay and I'd record, I recorded my shit, I recorded their stuff. And then, then I would get the audio, cut it together into the, you know, the, you know, it was very like just small. And this was before I had a game studio. And then uh, with Trover, it was like, we built a studio to make like a full game, you know? So, and like we had a budget for it with Sony. And so, and then I built a studio because of that. Um, and then and then I think towards the tail end of Trover, or not even the tail end, whenever we realized, whenever we decided to do the dual skew thing, because we were play testing on a screen and it was just like, oh shit, this will, this will play great on the flat screen if people wanted to do it that way. And that was when I was like, oh my god, I have a game studio. I could just, we could just make a fucking video. We could, we, it doesn't need to be VR, it doesn't need to be, it could be anything. Um, so then the early days of, of High on Life began, where it was like, I took the talking gun idea I had from forever. I had that gun from before Trover, or that idea, not that gun, I'm tired. I had that idea from before Trover to have these talking guns, and originally it was going to be a VR experience, and you'd have the talking gun, and you'd have... Um, if you remember, uh, fuck, budget cuts. You know how you can like, it's so smart, the UI in that game to grab different items. I don't know if you're familiar with it or if, or if you're not, it's really Vaguely. good. It's really good and, and the system they came up with for grabbing um, items, it was just so elegant and wonderful. And I, I, I realized I wanted to employ that and have your different guns and when you opened it up, they're like, hey, hey, asshole, come on, put me in the game, put me in the game and you grab a gun and then it goes away and the gun's like, oh, hey, what's going on? And put it up close to your face and it whispers. You, I had all these ideas, but like we ended up pivoting to Trover. For, let me mute my stupid phone. We, end up, we ended up pivoting over to Trover just because of the hardware that we were on. Um, and so the, uh, sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Anyway, so, so, you know, I knew the talking gun thing was something special. And then when we were talking about first person shooter, it made so much sense because like so many people on the team come from that world and and it's also just a genre we all love you know and i and i really want more for me as a gamer single player narrative <clears throat> focused like fun you know you know whether it's third first person more first person ideally because i think I've, there's quite a bit of the third person in, in that in that uh pool but um so something like the Bioshock or the, um, God, the, I'm obviously like, you know, we're quite inspired by Metroid, Metroid Prime and like the Metroidvania system of like lock and key upgrading your abilities, traversal abilities as you go. And, um, but yeah, definitely way more ambitious. I mean, this is this for an indie dev studio, this game is super ambitious and it's not just because the game itself is ambitious, just in terms of the systems, the upgrades, the mechanics. Um, combat, like all the all the places that you can go and explore. But then on top of it, if you add the narrative design that, that that's a key pillar to this game, that's where it gets really like crazy ambitious. Because you know we're trying to create a game where you know the guns are your companions the same way your companions are your companions in um, Dragon Age or something. You know, so they're gonna have things to say as you go through the game. I mean, they are literally your your companions, but they're also your guns. So we, we wanted to make it so that they felt al as alive as possible, and that's been 
a North Star for us. Like, you're not going to hear the same joke twice. You're not going to hear the same line of dialogue twice. They're very much, like, alive. And then the narrative design, heavily responsive narrative design. So, you know, you might be in a combat encounter and you're going to literally hear, like, an enemy say something and the gun's going to respond. Or just shit that will kind of make you go, holy fuck. Like, you know, obviously when it's working... Like if you're if you're if you're thinking about it, if you're a game developer, you'll be like, "What the fuck? This is crazy." How did they? You know, I think that for me, some of the coolest shit in games, you don't even really realize how crazy it is until later, because yeah. it just feels so good and seamless. You don't notice it, you know, but you but your brain does. Like you're, you know what I mean? Like it's yeah, kind of like the God of War being a a wonder. You like you, it doesn't click immediately, and then once you realize it, it's like. Oh, yes, yeah. yeah. There's a lot of stuff like that. I think there's also like your brain noticing things you don't, you know, like both good and bad. Like you know, sometimes you're watching a movie and you're dazzled by all of the, you know, visual or whatever, but your brain is noticing this is bad. But you're not. You think you're like happy until later, and then you're like, I think that fucking movie sucked actually. But anyway, um, it's I, yeah, like the opposite of that. But like I think. Um, the narrative design is something that we we spent a lot of time, and so that's just like a butt of a fucking shit ton of writing. Um, you know, Alec Robbins, our head writer, brilliant, like amazing, and did so much work for this game because unlike Trover, which was me temping, I went in and temped the whole. I I, I just did temp for block in for the whole game, and I just did it. It was fast. I was drinking. I didn't give a fuck. We're just having fun. We knew what it was, but it was just, let's just temp, you know? So we can get it stood up and see how it feels. And, 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 and then we got to the point of development where we had like fires over here, fires over there, everything's, you know, it was just like, we need to fix this. And, and the last thing anyone was gonna do was go and re-record or recast and record new lines and, re and write a script for stuff that was working fine. So it just ended up being me doing almost every fucking voice. And I was like, I cannot have that in this game. I can't. Like I'll do. I didn't even want to do Kenny. I was like, I the whole team. Remember, I was like, please. I really tried my hardest to convince everybody to let me cast somebody else um, to be Kenny, uh, who who would have been amazing. But I also respect the team, and I'm like, okay, if you guys think, if you guys say that, then I'll do it. But. Um, because I'm just like, the Morty voice is get, it's starting to get a little long in the tooth. <laughs> it's like, how many times am I going to fucking... Anyway, but... Um, one last rodeo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, one last character that will... I mean, our hope is that this thing lives, you know, this IP lives on, but um, we get to do more, but... And just more games in general. But um, but I am working on some new voices. But but yeah, like, like just... You've got... Every gun has a... F like, is treated the same level as Kenny. Like, you know, as you rescue them, you start going and exploring the world. We had to write dialogue for everything for each gun, and it's all unique and based off their personality. So it's a lot. There's a lot of narrative design. And um, yeah, and seeing it come together and seeing it actually all work is kind of like, holy shit, like this is really special what we're making here. Um, so could you go through an area with one gun and it's speaking something, and then you totally miss the dialogue you would have had if you had the other gun out correct yeah yeah absolutely yeah so if you if you've got multiple guns you're going through um a section of the game whatever gun you have out is the jokes and you know the the the, the guns will have things to say they're your they're your, they're your sort of gateway into understanding this world or maybe t obviously talking to an npc or whatever it might be and so yeah whatever gun you have out is going to change what you hear the jokes you hear the the their personalities are different, so they're going to say different things about the world. They're going to have a different take, um, a glass half full versus a glass half empty, or like a nervous versus I don't give a fuck. You know, it's really, it's, it really is like something we thought a lot about, and we really wrote a lot for the guns. Like, And I know people, I've heard like concerns like, oh, a gun fucking blabbing at me while I'm trying to play, but it's like, that's kind of what's for sale here, you know? I mean, they're your companions, so they, they really... It, 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 we, we're very mindful of like I don't want this to just be annoying you know it, it, it needs to be additive it needs to be funny it needs to be informative it needs to be you know it's not but it is a constant but it but it's a lot you know for, it's 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 ambitious uh, to say the least um, for, 
what, what we what we've done. And what's exciting too is like once you start rescuing the other guns, you know, you'll find a gun that's your that's that's your gun. You're like, and obviously they, they have different play styles, so you will be switching, and they have different like specials that help with that you need to, to get to access to certain areas and, and stuff. So you you are encouraged to use all the guns. Like that was another thing we really, although we do love the idea of a player having a favorite gun and wanting to hear mostly that guns like jokes. Um, and dialogue, we still wanted to encourage all the guns being used and like, um, but yeah, like you can, you can have a gun out for lo long chunks and just, if that's your favorite gun, you're going to get, a, that's going to be like, you know, that's your player experience, you know, yeah. which I think is really, really cool. Uh, something we brought up earlier when we were playing the demo was how rare it is to play a comedy game. Mm -hmm. Like, like this, like the game feels like a like you mentioned a Metroidvania. It's a shooter, but like it feels like a comedy game. Like we're laughing so often through it. Yeah. Um, how hard was it balancing? Because you don't play games very often that make you laugh and laugh that this consistently. Like how hard was it getting that right balance? Um, that wasn't hard for us, I don't think. But that's it. But we need experience, I think, from. Yeah, I mean that's just my natural go-to, you know. Um, even though this ha this game has darker themes and definitely themes I wanted to service in like a ooh, ooh that's uncomfortable and, and awful, like the idea of humans being used as drugs and the way they look when they're in the um, when they're in the hyperbong or when they're in one of the larger I don't even know what that species is called yet, but like the Garmantua species when they're just plugged into those like orifices and you're just seeing their like their eyes, they're, they're pale, they're drooling, their eyes are rolled back. It's very unsettling and disturbing because they're basically dying, you know. Um, they're not being eaten like a typical, you know, monster mo or just killed or whatever, but they're being, their souls are being, their, their life force energy is getting sucked out of them. And I, I always said it's painful, but they're in, but they're sort of in a coma. So it's almost like you're in a night, you're having a fucking painful nightmare, you know, essentially is what they're experiencing, which is dark and not necessarily talked about in the game but uh but like back world building behind the scenes that's sort of how i imagined it working but 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 aside from that yeah like pretty pretty um easy to lean into the comedy stuff and and having you know again alec uh on board as uh, as like head writer just just overseeing all of the mountains of scripts and all of the mountains of stuff that we need to get and as a liaison to you know, Eric, our, our design director, and just the, the team in general. Um, it was it wasn't hard because that like our instincts are comedic in nature. But the, but 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 then servicing those darker moments in a way that really are impactful that probably would be harder. That's the harder part, I think. Um, and I hope I hope I hope we land that plan. I, mean, I feel like, I feel like I feel good. I just hope that that people feel that those moments because there's a couple where it's like oh, oof. And it's dealing with, like, kind of dealing with addiction, but in a really weird, not hitting you over the head with it kind of way. It's sort of just more in the background, but it is interesting, you know? Um, and the hyperbong is such a weird thing. I love the ads because they show the human and they're smiling. Like, they're so happy to be, like, d murdered slowly over. But it's, like, it's such, it's such a funny marketing gag because it's, like, they're not at all. It's awful. You're killing these, you're killing things. But anyway, yeah. So... Speaking of the themes, um, what sort of, with this game, what sort of feeling are you hoping to like leave players with when they end the game? Like, yes, laughing at how much of a fun, funny game they played, but is there any other feeling like based off of the themes that you hope to instill? In um, them? I always like with everything I do. I try. I, the goal is to is is um, uh, a reprieve from the hard, hard parts of life, you know, distraction. Um, and not in a bad way, you know, obviously, but like, not, not, but like, I've had a lot of people tell me like, oh, you're this or that, um, like, you know, really help me through a dark time or help me, you know, get through some stuff. And, and I don't know, I think, I think this is one of those things where it's really fun. It's, it, I want people to just get sucked into it and like kind of lose themselves in this world. My, my dream would be they finish and then they're like, fuck, I'm going to, I'm going to go back and I'm going to do all these things differently and see what happens. Or I'm going to like hang out with this one alien and just hear what he says or her, what they, you know, I'm going to hear what they say. 
and not leave as quick as I did last time. Or I mean, there's so many. Th- my, that would be my best case scenario is that people really love it, and then they want to go back in right away and just kick the tires and and play around and 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 just do different stuff. Um, and you just, I think, making making people happy, making people feel, yeah, just joy, like happy, like like smile. You know, I think is would be the would be the dream. Um, and I think one of the best compliments you can get is, it was too short. <laughs> Although I don't think, I think it's actually a perfect length for what it is, you know? But, um, but that, you know, I've never, I've never, I, I read comments on the Oculus store for uh, like, not j- just every game I'm gonna buy, I'm like reading the comments. And as soon as I start hearing people say it's too short, I'm like, I'm in, I'm in, <laughs> I'm buying it. Cause it's just, I, even if it is too short, I'm just like, good. Give me a three hour fucking banger. Uh, that's, that's, that's what I'm looking for right now. But, um, our game is not three hours, by the way. It's way <laughs> longer than that. But, um, the, a lot of VR games, so when they say it's too short, it's yeah. like, oh, they, no, it, it, it's, it's definitely <laughs> short. But, uh, but I don't mind that, you know, but, um, you know, that's, that's a compliment. It's, if, if you don't want to hear it's too long. That's that's what you don't want to hear. No. <laughs> don't want to overstay your welcome. But um, yeah, I just I, I want to leave people with uh, just good feeling, like like yeah, fuck yeah, that was awesome. Like you know, like a good movie or something. Cool. Well, thank you so much for sitting down and chat with us. Mm-hmm. The game was really fun. Uh, when does it potentially come out? Uh, December thirteenth of this year um, on uh, Game Pass or Xbox. If you'd like to buy it, you I think they don't prevent you from that, right? Um, hope not. <laughs> and then it's also, yeah, I hope not. It's also on Steam and uh, Epic Game Store the same day, cool. December 13th. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. And yeah. I hope you have a good rest of the pack show. Maybe Thank you. Maybe you on the floor. I don't, yeah, if I get to the floor, we'll see. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe.